Hello everyone, it's April here and welcome to another video. Today I've got something a little bit different. I'm doing a Q&A video. I really love watching these videos and learning more about people that I watch online and that I admire, that I um, just love their art or follow. So I thought I would try and do one myself. I was a little bit nervous that I wouldn't get any questions, but I think a few people felt a little bit sorry for me because I posted uh, this as a little bit of a joke, but not really. So I did get a lot of questions so I'm going to try and get through them all and I'm also going to be working in this mixed media sketchbook it's uh, the Strathmore one and it is brand new brand spanking new so I'm just probably gonna do some sketching and film this little voiceover uh, so let's get into it okay I'm gonna start with Twitter because I only got a couple on there because I don't use Twitter ever I don't really know how to use it. Like, how do I even get to the question? On Twitter I wrote, Do you have a question about art, or me, or the perfect risotto recipe? Kind of wrote that as a throwaway. But Ludo from Ludo Sketches asked me, as a risotto lover, now I have to ask, what does your perfect recipe include? So, that was a bit of a trick question. Because the risotto cooker in the house is Martin. I don't cook risotto, because I'm not about standing over the stove for 40 minutes stirring rice. But Martin does love to cook risotto. It's a signature dish. If he was on MasterChef or any of those other programs, that's probably what he would cook. The only problem is he doesn't have a recipe. He just makes it up as he goes along. It's always delicious, but he just makes it up. So, so Martin's risotto recipe is the best one as far as I'm concerned. I have no idea what's in it though. So Amanda asked, uh, I started coming up with decent questions. So my question is, what question would you like to answer? Something easy probably, like, what's your middle name? Louise. Fun fact, when I was younger, I really wanted to hyphenate my first name and my middle name, so my name would be April Louise. I didn't though, <laughs> probably a good thing. Asha asks, my favorite medium? acrylic gouache and colored pencils at the moment I think if you guys have been watching my videos for long enough uh, you'll know that I am obsessed with acrylic gouache so I mean that's it really places traveled in the world I've been to quite a lot of places been very lucky to be able to travel so I've been to England currently here Scotland Ireland Wales I mean that's basically the UK I don't know if you should include that as like one thing. I think people that are living in different countries would get annoyed if you don't include them. So all of those countries. I lived in South Africa and New Zealand when I was a kid. I've been to Australia. I worked in America as a camp counselor for a few summers. So I've traveled there. I've been to Singapore, Zimbabwe, oh, Thailand, France, Spain, Italy. I think that's it. But there's so many other places I want to visit in the world. Like, literally every single country. Okay, uh, dream vacation. So my dream vacation would probably be something um, a little bit adventurous. So, like, uh, exploring. So, I really want to go to Borneo. Martin's favourite animal is orangutan. And I keep saying that we should go to Borneo and visit the orangutans. And go to, like, the forest, the rainforest there. Is there a rainforest in Borneo? must be if the orangutans live there. I really want to go to South America and like travel all over it that would be really awesome um, or Egypt or I really want to go to Japan and go to like Kyoto and Mount Fuji just basically anywhere where you can see a lot of cool stuff so my idea of a vacation isn't sitting by a pool in a hotel reading a book that would bore me to tears but yeah exploration is definitely my favorite thing to do. Sasha also asks what do I watch on YouTube or who do I watch on YouTube so my YouTube viewing falls into a few different categories obviously number one would be art so I watch a lot of vloggers a lot of um, like studio bloggers a lot of artists I follow quite a few people that I'm sure a lot of you know because the art community on YouTube is quite it's quite big and varied but also a lot of you know you'll know a lot of the artists so just think of an artist on YouTube I probably watch them and then the next category I follow is probably games. So I really love watching Let's Plays, like Minecraft Let's Plays. I was into The Sims Let's Plays for a while with James Turner um, from The Sims Supply. And 
um what else oh seven days to die which is like a zombie game i love watching let's plays and the third one would probably be like health slash food so i watch a lot of um vegan like what i eat in days just for ideas or things like that what where did your username come from a few people asked me this and i think i might make a little separate video it's been on my mind for a long time i want to make a little like little animation like five minutes long or something just to kind of like show where my name come from my where my name comes from it's not exciting at all but i guess it's interesting for some people so skip that one for now and then last one from sasha favorite thing to cook or favorite recipes um i really love cooking lots of different things to be honest i love asian food uh, mexican and italian i guess i'll take it or leave it really to be honest i love pasta but i mean who doesn't um yeah i guess asian food probably like uh rice with vegetables and tofu it's probably my favorite thing to cook and eat or mexican like fajitas or tacos yeah i just had dinner so it's good thing i'm, I'm not hungry right now otherwise i literally would be salivating let's move on to youtube so i put in my community tabby thing which i never use ever uh a few people ask me questions in here so that's exciting okay um nef neftali neftali albert i know that one asked me what's your favorite animal that is a tough one uh that's a really that's a tough one i mean i love animals but if i had to choose i'd probably do a top three if that's okay so llama love a llama um i really love narwhals and what other animal oh, a dog i mean i know it's like pretty simple but dogs are just lovely you gotta love a dog Tyler asked what's my favourite and least favourite medium. So my favourite is acrylic wash. My least favourite medium probably would be markers. Like alcohol markers. I do have a ton of Copic markers that I bought when I got had a uh, gift thing from my work. So I brought like a whole bunch of Copic markers. Then I realised I didn't like them. I wouldn't advise you to do that. Test them out first. Like buy three. Just test them. So yeah, alcohol markers. I don't like them. Sorry. And Laura asks how I became vegan and my vegan story. I think this one would be really fun to do like a little video. I have a video coming out hopefully at the end of the month where I visit an animal sanctuary. So that might be a really good one to get into. So yeah, I won't answer that now because I'll just I'll just do that in that other video. But basically I just watched some stuff, you know, read some stuff and started eating more vegetables, really. I mean it's simple. Laura also said run a small business and taxes in the UK. I heard you were okay not to claim if you earned under 1k. So I think taxes and everything in um, how taxes are done and running a small business in the UK would definitely be even a video series on its own. Um, I don't really think I'm qualified enough yet to talk about that because I've only been, I was, it did used to be freelance actually in my old job. So I've done a lot of stuff with taxes before, but not running a small business. So I don't really feel comfortable talking about that yet. But uh, as for the claiming under 1k, I'm not quite sure about that. I think I heard 3k, but again, not an expert. So please check that um, with a professional, not me. Uh, how you and Martin met? A few people asked how Martin and I met. I was trying to think of a fun story to tell you, but couldn't think of one. So I'll just tell you the real story. Uh, Martin and I met in an old job that we both were at. So it was a job that I was at and then he joined and we worked in the same office together. Uh, I was a 3D artist at the time and Martin came on as a 3D artist too. Um, but he doesn't do that anymore. He doesn't do 3D. It's one dimension too much for him. So Martin, uh, he used to live an hour from our work and I used to live half an hour and he would pass like my house on the way. So we were like, let's carpool and save some money. So he would drive to my house and then I would drive us to work. And then over, you know, a couple months we became friends, one thing led to another. I mean, I guess I was just listening to me sing along to songs and my awesome driving skills. You know, romance just kind of bloomed, blossomed in the car. Also, that was a really old car and the roof used to leak. So when it rained, like the uh, window in the top of the car used to rain all over us. And if you would go around a corner, the rain would go like, Phew. it was pretty fun. 
So Laura also says, how are you so motivated and productive with your art and suggestions for others as you seem so fearless and are happy to give anything a try? We are getting into the deep stuff here, guys. I thought picking my favorite animal was hard. So a few people ask me how I stay motivated and productive. Um, I do have a full-time job, so obviously it makes it a little bit harder when you have a full-time job and you're trying to be creative on the side. Everyone gets tired, um, everyone feels burnout, and especially if you have a creative job or you're doing something with your mind, at the end of the day, you sometimes don't want to draw. So I may seem productive now, it's probably because I have been uh, like the rest of the world in lockdown for the past few months, which means I haven't had to wake up at six or drive an hour to work and back or you know be in the office all day so I've had the luxury of being able to do stuff before work or during my lunch or straight after work so I may seem productive right now but trust me in a couple of months when I'm back at work my productivity is gonna go way down and I'm, I'm not gonna be getting as much done but for me I find that a good thing as well because sometimes when you have so much free time you tend to procrastinate or not do as much as you would like but I think if you only have a finite amount of time in the day like say for example you have kids or you have a full-time job or I don't know you have like seven dogs you only have an hour in the day right so you make the most of that time and you're motivated to use that time because you know once you know once the day's gone it's gone so I think actually sometimes having less time than you would like is a little bit more motivating and then other things that keep you motivated are just like just doing things that I enjoy. So I've been doing the 100 day challenge at the moment. Um, some of you may know I'm a bit behind. I'm about 25 days behind right now and that's because I got to a point in it where I wasn't doing something that I enjoyed. I was drawing um, plants but I wasn't really having fun with it because I was like doing a different style. So I just stopped doing it. I wasn't motivated to do it at all. And then once I started like adding character and faces and like weird stuff to my plants, I started enjoying it again and I got really motivated. And that's not to say that if you're not motivated, don't draw, because sometimes you just have to like push through. But I think it takes experience to know when to push through and just draw, even if you don't want to, and when to take a break. Like if you know you're burnt out, take a break. I think it just comes with time. And that's for being fearless and happy to give anything a try. Yeah, it's easy. I'm not um, saving lives or like, curing a disease or building a rocket that's going to take men into space i'm literally just drawing stuff so don't be scared try new stuff it's just paper i mean at the end of the day just chuck it away if it doesn't work out okay now i'm going to jump into instagram from ludo sketches what is your favorite procreate brush that's a very easy one my favorite procreate brush is 6b very boring but i love it it's great for sketching it's great for coloring in apart from that you also love nico rule uh i think that's how you call it they're my two go-to brushes. Amy asks, what sparked your interest in doing YouTube and illustration? A couple of people asked me why I um, started YouTube videos. So uh, I'll tell you, because the people want to know, so I'll tell them. So as for illustration, I drew when I was a kid a lot. Um, I kind of grew up wanting to be an illustrator, but when I was in like the top of high school before I went to uni I I don't know why I think it was just like it seemed impossible at the time social media wasn't a thing then so it was kind of you had to do the old route where you had a portfolio you got an agent you got published it wasn't like today it seems a lot easier today I think to get an illustration career up and running like back in the day and when I say back in the day it was like 2000s um it, it was a lot harder so I didn't think I could get into illustration so I decided to get into graphic design and then into 3D. So it's basically, it's a long story, but basically I just ended up on the computer for the rest of my life. So a few years ago, I was kind of sick of the computer. I, I'm on it all day long. I was doing 3D and it was just, I just needed a break from it. So I thought I'd start drawing again. And it, yeah, just started drawing again. It took a long time to remember like skills that I had lost and I'm still learning, I'm still a noob in a lot of areas and I still need to improve, I want to improve, but I basically just uh, just started drawing. So on YouTube, I never watched art videos, I didn't even realize art videos were a thing. I used to watch a lot of uh, gaming videos and I 
I must have just stumbled across an art video one day maybe or I was looking at like a review of an art supply or something and I think I came across either Frenard or Mini Small. It was one of those two. I remember those two guys being the first people I really watched and it was watching Mini Small. She did her filler sketchbook in 30 days series and I thought that looks so much fun. I really want to do it and then I became like obsessed with watching art videos. I followed a lot of artists. I got on Instagram and one thing led to another. I just thought it might be fun to document my journey and uh, find other people with this similar interests and stuff. So yeah, one thing led to another and I love making videos and editing them. So just became a little hobby and now I do it every week. Okay, what is your favorite thing to draw? So this changes a lot depending on what I'm feeling like. When I first started to draw, I just drew people like all the time, portraits and people. Uh, I just wanted to get better at people. They're very hard. <laughs> Still can't draw a body. I'm just like, just the head up, thanks. Leave the rest. But uh, right now, I would say my favorite thing to draw is animals. I really love drawing animals. So yeah, animals. What do you find the most challenging to draw? So I would say the most challenging thing to draw is something that you haven't drawn before, which seems pretty logical. But if you think about it, uh, it's kind of true because, for example, I tried to draw a frog the other day and it was a draw this in your style and I'd never drawn a frog before and I thought this would be fine. This frog is super cute. I can like draw a frog. How hard can it be? Turns out it's pretty hard. But I know that if I draw frogs for a couple of days, fill out maybe like five or six pages of frogs, I won't find them difficult anymore. So I really should do the same things with hands and feet and uh, bodies because right now I think probably like bodies and hands are probably the hardest but I'm just like ignoring them to me they do not exist in my universe right now I don't want to tackle them but one day I know that I'm gonna have to learn how to draw a body okay Andy from Andyopolis asks how many siblings do you have I have two and my sister who is 10 years younger than me she is a tattoo artist and she's actually on Instagram this is one of her things I'll just put it up here. I don't know which one I'm going to pick yet, but look, she draws as well. And then I have a brother. He's uh, five years younger than me and he lives in New Zealand. Uh, someone asked me, what shampoo do you use? What shampoo do I use? Do I need to go check the shower? I honestly don't know. <laughs> I don't know what shampoo. I, I don't pick. I'm not like a, I don't like pick things. And you know, I'm not, I don't like go out and like, I, I'm not a, a beauty product person. I have a chia conditioner, which I love. But as for the shampoo, I'm not really sure. I just try and pick vegan and cruelty free. And it smells good. I don't know. As long as it smells good and it's good for the uh, animals, I'm happy. What is your go-to palette? So my go-to palette would be my gouache. And I actually need to update this because my gouache has expanded. I don't know if I want to keep all of this, these colors in my color palette. Uh, right now but I'll kind of just pop this up on the screen this is from procreate and this is what I use for my digital stuff and this is based off my acrylic wash now the only reason I do this is not because I'm like special and I want to have a color palette for myself it's because I'm really lazy and I find it really awkward especially when you're in digital to pick colors because there's so many colors that you can pick you could literally pick from a gazillion colors so I don't want to do that, so I just like pick the same colours as my paints. But yes, I really want to do look into colour one day and look at different colour palettes and stuff because sometimes I think I'm a little bit boring using the same colours all the time. What's your current guiltiest pleasure? I don't believe in guilty pleasures, you know? If it makes you happy, don't feel guilty. <laughs> That's such, such a cliche answer. Um, guilty pleasure. So, I don't really know if it's guilty, but... I have really been enjoying every night for the last couple of weeks watching an episode of Downton Abbey while playing Animal Crossing. Now, Downton Abbey is fantastic. If you haven't seen it, watch it. I'm re-watching it, guys. That's how sad I am. I'm basically your mum. Rewatching Downton Abbey. Um, who is best at cooking between you and Martin? Uh, I'm best at cooking. Martin loves to cook a risotto. I think I mentioned that. He does some other stuff too, but um, I think I'm probably more adventurous in the kitchen and I just enjoy cooking. I like, 
Uh, at the end of the day, I just put my iPad on the microwave, try not to drop it on the floor and break it again. And I like to watch YouTube videos or listen to a podcast and just cook. And I just find it really nice. And I also love making delicious food for people and watching them be happy. So yeah, me, I'm best. What's your favorite sketchbook if there's any? This is like a question for the ages. I mean, sketchbooks, I have used quite a lot of them, but I don't think I've ever used the same one more than twice because I'm always looking for that perfect sketchbook. I really enjoyed using the uh, Lectum, Lectum 1917, but I only use that with colored pencils, so I don't know how it uses with markers or paint or anything. I also quite enjoyed the Moleskin, even though I remember at the time, I did complain a lot about the Moleskin because it seemed to repel watercolor, but as an actual book itself, I did find it quite nice. This Strathmore mixed media sketchbook looks lovely, apart from the fact that it doesn't lay flat. So I'm still on a mission to find the perfect sketchbook. May Fairy, I think that's how you say it. May Fairy, Mafferi asks, what was your first ever sale? Well, I opened my Etsy shop up a few years ago, about three years ago, I think now. And that was only to raise some money for when I was um, raising money for a charity. I was raising money for WWF for when I did my first marathon a few years ago. So I basically opened up the Etsy shop to try and sell stuff to make money. And it seemed, it did work. I made about 60 pounds. So that was good and I sold my Inktober endangered animal zine so that's probably the first sale I made I can't remember who it was to probably to Liz to be honest I remember she was one of the first people to buy from my shop when I first opened it what is my best seller in my shop so right now in my current shop uh, the best sellers would probably be a tie between I haven't looked at the numbers but the best seller would probably be a tie between the art supply stickers the Plant Pal sticker pack and the Fluffy Guinea Pig, which is a right old hit. People love a good Fluffy Guinea Pig. What is your own favourite creation? Probably the Plant Pal stickers because they are so cute. I just love plants. Um, Andy also asks, do you like milk tea? I don't know what that is. Is it tea with milk in it? If so, the answer is no, because I don't like tea. I'm English and I don't like tea. I know, it's really weird. Neon Dream Corner, nice name, asks, uh, what colours do I use? I know it's gouache, but is it while using like in mixed water? So the colours that I use are all from my acrylic gouache. There's quite a lot of colours here, but I'll just kind of like show you. So you can find all of these, if you're in the UK, I find them on Jackson's Art, but if not, I'm sure that there's an art shop near you that sells them. Um, just pick the colours you like, really. And it is acrylic wash. I'm not quite sure what you were asking about mixing it with water, but you can mix it with water, but it doesn't re-wet. So it dries, once it's dry, it's dry. I'm not sure if that's what you were asking, but that's what I'm telling you. Liz from Liz VR asks, what do you like the most about making YouTube videos? The fame. Um, the best thing I like about making YouTube videos, I actually mentioned it in my vlog the other day, is the fact that I've been able to connect with other people that like art and do art and uh, making friends. So the best thing about making YouTube videos is definitely connecting with other artists and you guys uh, who comment and stuff. That's my favourite thing. Liz also says, sorry I'm not your mum. It's okay Liz. My mum's pretty cool. She hasn't asked me a question yet but she'll do. Can you reach your forehead with your big toe? No. Lindsay Thomas Art asks, what's your dream location to live? Um, or I, this is a bit of a tough one because I quite like living where I am right now. Like not, not the street. I would like to be in a bit of a quieter area, but I do quite like, like this area in England is quite nice. But if I had to pick a dream location, Probably Barcelona or Tenerife, one of those two. I lived in Barcelona for two years and I lived in Tenerife for six months and I enjoyed both of the places very much and would very much like to return there, even if it's just for a year to live. Maisie, my friend from work, asks, how are you so productive all the time? You are an inspiration. 
Thanks, Maisie. I already answered your question, but I'll take the compliment. MissMina.pt I always wonder what the PT stands for. Asks, what does your Insta name mean? Um, I will answer that question later in another video. What's your day job? My day job is I am uh, a motion graphic designer, which means I work a lot with After Effects, Premiere sometimes, uh, a bit of Illustrator, and I make animations or edit videos. So I work for a company and we have clients, like external clients will come to us and they'll need a video and then we make them videos. So that's what I do. I do a little bit of 3D as well. And yeah, I'm just on the computer all day making videos. <laughs> then I come home and I make videos as a hobby. Pastel or bright colors. Um, I actually use a mixture of both. So I use a lot of pastel colors and I also throw in some bright colors. If I had to pick, probably would pick bright colors just because I do love a good pop of colour. Pastel colours are lovely though, aren't they? I mean, all the colours are lovely, really. Okay, our bad Bianca asks, how did you become an artist? Was this something you always wanted to do? So I kind of answered that question earlier. Um, I always wanted to be an artist when I was younger. I actually wanted to be an author as well. And then I wanted to be an illustrator, and then I wanted to be a journalist, and then I wanted to be a waitress on rollerblades, but... <laughs> It's all kind of in the artistic realm. But yeah, I did always want to be an artist, but I just didn't think it was possible. So I went into like more computer stuff, but I was still doing creative stuff. It wasn't, you know, with my hands or it wasn't creating like art, but it was in the creative field. So I've kind of always done something creative, but I really would like to do art more as like a job. So that's kind of where I'm trying to move to. Emma Neri Art asks, do you have another challenge planned? when you finish the 100 day project yes i do it's a 100 day nap project oh actually i do have another project planned for after i finish that 100 day project but it's not something i'm going to be sharing a daily it's not gonna be like a daily project but it's something that i'm going to do uh work on like for a couple of months and then show so it's for um it's a surprise for someone so I can't show like the whole process online, but it's going to be fun and I'm really looking forward to it and you will definitely see the end result from that. And there is a question here about how I turn paintings or drawings and make them digital and put them, you know, into their computer to make stickers and stuff. That is a, an entire video on its own. I'm sure there's a lot of videos out there that show you how to do that. I'm going to steal that idea and make a video out of it. <laughs> so I won't ask that question right now. Fuzzy Dragons asks, who are your three favourite artists if you have any? So I didn't know if you meant like artists, like classical artists or Instagram artists or sandwich artists, but I just kind of picked three names out of the air, really. I do love Gustav Klimt, Gustav, Gustav Klimt. I do love his work. I also, um, growing up, I always loved Alphonse Mucha, M Mucha. I love his work as well. And then um, I was trying to think like someone right now who's super, super inspiring for me. And on Instagram, someone whose work I'm really gravitating towards right now is uh, Scott Flynn Illustrations. I did a Draw This In Your Style um, from her the other week, a couple of weeks ago. But I think her art is absolutely beautiful. And every time I see it, I'm inspired to make something. So yeah, those three. <laughs> There's a lot more, trust me. But those three came to mind. Maxa Illustration asks, how do you make your Instagram alive? So how do I keep my Instagram, like how do I make it exciting and make people wanna uh, click on it, I guess, and like use it and comment and stuff? I'm not really quite sure how to answer this question because I am still learning how to use Instagram. I'm still um, learning how to make the best photos, how to do the best, you know, things, ask the questions, do the comments and stuff. I'm really not the best person to ask. I just kind of pop what I like on Instagram, hope other people like it, and take it from there. I think the best thing to do is just put work on there that you like, even if it's uh, work in progresses. I think those are really fun to look at. And uh, engage with people that comment and engage with other artists, really. I don't know. There's lots of, there's lots of videos out there that can help you. I'm sorry, I'm not very helpful with that. 
Emma Carpenter illustration asks, what were people's reactions when you said you wanted to be an artist and run your own shop? Um, I never really told anyone I wanted to be an artist. I just kind of did it because I'm a rebel like that. I, I think I probably actually probably spoke to Martin just because I needed some space in the house for a desk. Martin's very supportive. He always lets me take up as much room as I want in the bedroom, even though it's on his side of the bed. And he always helps me and I'm like doing videos and stuff by making dinner and things like that. So he's all good. He's always telling me he likes my stuff. He's always telling me I'm awesome. So that's good. Um, my mum really loves my shop. She thinks it's really cool. And I guess a few friends at work and stuff. But apart from that, I mean, the only people I really talk to about it are you guys online. <laughs> so yeah. I haven't had any people tell me it's a bad idea yet. Emma also asks, if you could have one creative superpower, what would it be? That's an amazing question. One creative superpower. See, I know what my superpower would be if I was a superhero. It would be to freeze time. But I don't know what my creative superpower would be. Let me have a think. I mean, I don't want to pick anything cheaty, like know how to draw everything, because that wouldn't be fun. So I guess I would refill paint tubes up when they're running low. Yeah, that would be a good superpower. Save some money too. Creation Blooms asks, what is another medium you enjoy beside gouache? Procreate. I really love Procreate. I haven't used it for a long time since I've been doing the 100 day project. So I've been very busy with that one, but Procreate, I do love. Do you have any pets? Apart from Beryl, no. It's just my plants. Um, as a kid, I always had pets. Always had dogs, cats, rabbits, guinea pigs, hamsters, rats. Well, we had one rat. Birds, fish. We've had lots of pets in the past. But Martin and I live in a flat, so we can't have any pets right now. But we do have a dog in mind. <laughs> like a dream, like imagination dog. And a cat. And they have names. And it's going to be wonderful when we finally get them. But we have to get a house first. Okay, so these are a list of favourites. So my favourite dinner are probably what I mentioned before. It would, it would be Japanese or Mexican. Yum. Uh, favourite pancake chopping. Oh, love maple syrup, blueberries and banana is my favourite pancake chopping. Favourite fruit. I don't know, man. Oh, it's a toughie. I used, to, I used to say grapes, but I think now I would say banana. I don't actually like eating banana on its own, just like banana, but banana goes so well with everything. Like, it's such a versatile fruit. So yeah, banana. My favorite holiday. So the favorite, like, favorite holiday that I've been on. I really enjoyed my last holiday to South Africa with Martin. Um, I've been there before because my family live out there, but it was so nice taking him out and showing him around and like saying this is where I used to play when I was a kid and we used to live in that road and then also we went to Cape Town which I've never been to before so it was also like a new thing for me as well so that was a really lovely holiday um definitely joint with that was when I went to Thailand with my sister a few years ago we went for three weeks and it was probably the most amazing time I've ever had it was it was the most probably the most the most wonderful holiday wonderful country culture food everything i just love thailand so much i really want to go back there and my favorite film favorite film geez tough question i mean the snob in me wants to say shawshank redemption because obviously that's the best film but like the small child in me wants to say zootropolis so yeah a mix between those two What's the nicest, loveliest thing someone has said about your art? Um, I can't think of a particular comment, but I have been getting a few nice, lovely comments since I've opened my shop and also, you know, in the last few months with Instagram. And just any comment where someone it just makes someone smile or just makes their day a little brighter is the, probably the nicest comment you could get. Just knowing that someone You've made someone's day a little bit happier because they've seen something nice. I could also show them a chocolate bar. I mean, that would do the same thing, but. And it looks like that was all the questions. So if any more come in, I'll probably do them on my studio vlog next week. So make sure you check back for that one. I have just been talking to the camera and doing like a little question thing because I didn't think I would be able to draw. So whatever you have seen me draw, I hope that you enjoyed it. 
and I hope that it turned out lovely. Um, thank you so much if you asked a question. It was really fun and maybe I'll do one of these again in a few more months. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it and I still don't know all my favourite filmers. But that is all I have for today. I hope that you enjoyed this and I will catch you on my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.